production of vitamins so vitamins can be also produced by conventional fermentation production method they are produced on large scale basically because they are required in huge quantity for different purposes particularly in relation to human and animal welfare so vitamins are very important dietary components and they are basically used as the growth factors and they are important for the metabolism of different types of living cells many of the vitamins are synthesized by microorganisms many of them are excreted by these microorganisms and they are produced in high quantity so therefore this ability of such microbes can be utilized on industrial scale for the large scale production therefore such type of microbes are very important in relation to industrial production of vitamin two vitamins we have to discuss discuss the first one is vitamin b12 so vitamin b12 is required to be produced on large scale why the reason is that it is a dietary component of normal growth in human beings and domestic animals it is required in hematopoiesis process that means it is required in the synthesis of red blood cells and there is a daily requirement of this vitamin and we obtain this vitamin b12 through diet and through microorganisms like normal flora of intestine vitamin is very important because deficiency of this vitamin it leads to anemia that is decrease in the concentration of hemoglobin in red blood cells so anemia that results due to this deficiency is called as pernicious anemia or vitamin b12 deficiency anemia the important property of this vitamin is that it is heat stable and it is water soluble vitamin basically there are different forms of vitamin b12 vitamin b12 is not a single compound it is a group of compounds that means it is a group of closely related compounds and the there are differences within these different compounds in relation to specific r group the examples of these closely related compounds are cyanocobalamin in which the r group is cn hydroxocobalamin adenosyl cobalamin and methyl cobalamin hydroxocobalamin is the form generally produced by many bacteria which are then further converted into human form human form of vitamin b12 is cyanocobalamin there are several sources of vitamin b12 so it is there in food particularly non veg meat fish poultry eggs it is also there in the milk so it is there in dairy products intestinal microorganisms which are the normal flora of our intestine like e coli and lactobacillus several other they are responsible for the production of vitamin b12 and this is then absorbed in the blood through from intestine several u bacteria and actinomyces are good sources for this vitamin let us see the structure of vitamin b12 it is not a single compound it is a group of closely chemically related 
cobamides so in all the general name is cobamide it consists of one molecule of cobinamide cobinamide is corine rings and these rings are linked to nucleotide this cobinamide molecule has a central atom of cobalt and it is surrounded by four pyrrole rings which are joined together to form a macrostructure called as macro ring the nucleotide which is there in cobinamide is 5,6 dimethyl benzimidazole ribonucleotide whole molecule is also called as cobaltocorinoid so the whole molecule is called as cobaltocorinoid or it is also called as cobinamide when this cobalt is linked to cyanide the whole compound is called as cyanocobalamine or it is also called as the true form of vitamin b12 because human liver it contains this cyanocobalamine where it is stored in hepatocytes similar vitamin b12 is synthesized by several microorganisms this is the structure of vitamin b12 we need not to fully remember this structure but this is just for our understanding you can see this is the structure of a cobinamide which consists of a corin ring and a ribonucleotide this corin ring it consists of a central cobalt and then four pyrrole rings you can see here then this is ribonucleotide now this cobalt is it is bound to when it is bound to this cn c triple bond n that is cyanide then this structure called structure is called as cyanocobalamine this is how if there is binding of hydroxyl group then it will be called as hydroxo cobinamide or hydroxo cobalamine so there are microbial producers which are industrially important for the production of vitamin b12 or cobinamide these are particularly from actinomycetes group of bacteria actinomycetes group of bacteria they have a mycelial form and they produce spores as well these characteristics are just similar to the characteristics of fungi streptomyces griseus streptomyces olivaceus streptomyces antibioticus these are the examples of actinomycetes then there are several eu bacteria sporulating like bacillus megatherium bacillus coagulogens clostridium butyricum pseudomonas denitrificans non sporulating propionobacterium species like propionobacterium friedenreichi and sherman generally this vitamin it is manufactured by submerged culture process with continuous aeration and agitation of the production medium the fermentation period lasts up to 3 to 5 days so let us see the production of vitamin b12 by using streptomyces olivaceus vitamin b12 is remember that this org this is a organism which is used in the production of streptomycin antibiotic so in streptomycin production vitamin b12 is also produced and therefore it is called as a by product which is obtained during streptomycin fermentation however during the large scale production of vitamin b12 the conditions are optimized such that the production of vitamin b12 should be 
increased and under these optimized conditions this streptomyces species produces large quantity of vitamin b12 submerged fermentation process for the production of vitamin b12 using streptomyces oliveaceus the biochemical characteristics of this organism is that they are highly proteolytic so they can hydrolyze casein gelatin they are amylolytic so they can hydrolyze starch reduction of nitrate to nitride is one of the biochemical characteristics and the optimum temperature for the growth is between 25 to 27 degrees celsius so the first step is the development of inoculum the question is what type of inoculum is required to be built up which is to be inoculated into production medium so the answer is spore inoculum so initially the spore inoculum is built up and considering the fact that the production of vitamin b12 it is a primary metabolite and it is produced during the growth phase so therefore in order to avoid the chances of loss of vitamin b12 spore culture is used to inoculate the production medium because basically the production of vitamin b12 starts uh, within 20 hours following inoculation so in inoculum development spore inoculum is developed for this the stock culture is first revived on benin sagar and then it is allowed to grow for 4 to 6 days during which there will be formation of spores these spores are then inoculated into liquid medium having a uh, lower volumes like 250 ml so this medium will support the growth germination of spores to mycelia and it will also support the formation of spores so con- during continuous aeration and agitation for 2 to 3 days the mycelia will develop then these mycelial flask cultures are used to inoculate larger volume of inoculum medium contained in inoculum tanks connected in series so these mycelia will then produce spores and these spores are then used for the inoculation of production medium so usually the inoculum size is 5% depending on the production medium volume in general this is the composition of benet sagar that supports the growth and sporulation it has yeast extract beef extract then casein hydrolyzed glucose this is the general composition then the production medium will have a different composition it should have simple metabolizable sugar proteinaceous compounds and the most important is cobalt chloride you see that this component is missing in the earlier inoculum development medium because cobalt is it acts as a precursor because it gets directly incorporated into the product so cobalt is added in the medium in the form of its salt that is cobalt chloride so this is a unique fermentation you can remember this fermentation by considering the fact that it is a precursor based fermentation earlier we have studied one more precursor based fermentation if you remember it is penicillin production of penicillin and this is the another one production of vitamin b12 is a precursor based fermentation in which the unique component of production medium will be cobalt chloride along with that there will be nitrogenous substances like distiller soluble soybean meal 
corn strip liquor yeast extract casein so these are uh, added in different combinations there may be addition of cyanide during the production phase so that the cyanide uh, will react with vitamin cobinamide molecule and that will lead to formation of cyanocobalamin but however considering the toxicity of cyanide to the actinomyces this may be added at the end of fermentation during recovery of vitamin this is the general composition of production medium we can see here there is uh, addition of glucose in 1 gram percent then distillate soluble or soybean meal as a nitrogen and carbon source calcium carbonate as a neutralizing agent soybean meal as a carbon source and antifoam agent cobalt chloride is added in 2 to 10 ppm parts per billion now this concentration is dependent on the tolerance of streptomyces because the question arises if it is a precursor based fermentation increase in the concentration of precursor will leads to increase in the production of vitamin b12 so it may happen but there are limitations the limitation is that cobalt chloride is a toxic compound and if it is added in too much high concentration then this cobalt chloride will also cause damage to streptomyces so it is dependent on the tolerance of this streptomyces so if it is able to tolerate the high concentration as high as 10 ppm then this concentration of cobalt chloride may be used now the events that happens following inoculation into production medium so initially there is decrease in ph and the sugar is utilized rapidly during first 24 hours so during these first 24 hours the sporulation uh, spores will germinate and the mycelial growth will occur and the synthesis of vitamin b12 will start around 20 hours and continues till 60 to 72 hours the duration is approximately 3 to 4 days until the mycelial lysis occurs for the stabilization of this fermentation broth during the recovery the one additional step is there that is the pH of the fermentation broth is reduced to uh, reduced to approximately 5 and by means of addition of reducing agent to prevent the oxidation of vitamin however the role of sodium sulfide is consumption of oxygen but the exact role is not known the yields of vitamin are usually in the range of 1 to 2 milligrams per liter however the industrial strains produce approximately 60 milligrams per liter of cobinamide then recovery so at the end of fermentation we see that this is intracellularly produced but if it is produced on large quantity in the cells it will be excreted okay so it will be and it will be the it will be present in fermentation broth as well as it will be associated with mycelium so in order to get the vitamin b12 which is associated with mycelium this mixture 
it is heated to boiling at ph 6.5 to 8.5 for 10 to 30 minutes and that will liberate cobalamine from the mycelium and it will be solubilized in water fermentation broth further for further processing uh, it is dependent on whether this vitamin b12 it is going to be used for animal consumption or human consumption so if it is for animal consumption then crude form of vitamin b12 is produced if it is for human consumption then it needs purification for the preparation of crude concentration of vitamin concentrate of vitamin b12 to be used as a feed supplement in animals the whole broth is first evaporated to dryness and for drying there is use of large evaporators or vacuum evaporators as well as drum dryers and spray dryers in order to obtain the concentrate that is how the crude vitamin b12 is produced if it is intended to be used for human consumption or pharmaceutical use then the additional steps should be applied here the first step is filtration so after boiling filtration is there so that the insoluble material will be separated then treatment with casein so that this cobinamide or cobalamine is converted to cyanocobalamine so addition of casein potassium cyanide for the conversion for the formation of cyanocobalamine the treatment period is 16 hours at 25 degrees celsius next step is purification and one first step in that is extraction using solvents so combination of different solvents can be used for the extraction of vitamin b12 from aqueous broth into solvent and later on from solvent it is back extracted into water so these are the shifts that first from aqueous solution vitamin b12 will be extracted into solvent then from solvent again it is back extracted into water so the shifts between solvent and water will leads to get rid of soluble impurities so solvent extraction involves addition of solvents like crisol and carbon tetrachloride so this organic extract is added in very high concentration so that this vitamin will be solubilized in this organic extract and then further there is addition of butanol then from this mixture this vitamin b12 is back extracted with water by increasing addition of increased volume of water now vitamin will be back extracted in water the aqueous extract is then separated and again the previous extraction step is repeated so this will help to minimize the purification minimize the insoluble impurities which are present in fermentation broth later on at the end from this organic extract vitamin is precipitated by means of addition of acetone ether mixture and then this precipitate is separated this crude vitamin b12 precipitate is then further purified for decolorization and by using several filtration aids in order to remove the soluble and insoluble impurities and for the clarification so these columns are packed with charcoal bentonite fillers earth these are known for the removal of pigments and there can be use of 
ion exchange chromatography for the end level purification of vitamin B12. Then final crystallization will be done by using methanol acetone or ethanol acetone or acetone water in proper concentrations. Then further concentration is done by drying and there can be production of pure crystalline powder of cyanocobalamine which can be further diluted with water pyrogen free water sterile water and it can be then filled in vials for the marketing purpose this is how vitamin b12 or cyanocobalamine is produced from streptomyces oliveaceus other microbes like propineobacteria are also this is a well studied fermentation and it is said that propineobacteria give more yield as compared to stepto I see. So these are the two strains of propineobacteria which are used for large scale production. So the yield which is obtained from Streptomyces oliveaceus is lower like 8.5 milligrams per liter as compared to propineobacteria species where it gives approximate yield of as high as 59 milligrams or ml this is the flow sheet of vitamin b12 production spore inoculum of streptomyces oliveaceus spore inoculum built up then it is inoculated into production tank this is very important component cobalt chloride after incubation for three to four days the next step is acidification and boiling it helps in the separation of vitamin b12 and solubilization of vitamin b12 in water then formation conversion of cobalamine to cyanocobalamine by KCN treatment then if it is for the animal consumption then directly the broth is evaporated and uh, for the formation of homogeneous powder it will go to hammer mill and it will be this crude form is useful for animal feed supplement if it is for human consumption then further purifications are required filtration solids and mycelia are separated then solvent extraction then back extraction into water and again solvent extraction precipitation by acetone ether mixture then this precipitate is separated by filtration or suitable centrifugation technique and this crude precipitate is further uh, purified by column chromatography using activated charcoal bentonite or aluminia or the further purification will involve use of ion exchange chromatography to obtain the vitamin b12 in pure form then it can be further concentrated by evaporation and uh, crystallization is allowed to form will lead to the formation of vitamin b12 which is ready to be filled in vials with diluting uh, fluids or it can be sold in the form of powder also